Good day, travelers. It's Hello, Chelsea guys. and Lena here. In this episode, we'll be spending on a budget 48 hours in Istanbul, Turkey. We're gonna eat so delicious food here, and we're gonna see the most famous places in Istanbul. This is the best shawarma ever. Oh my, so tasty. Chopper is just leaking out. Oh my goodness, everywhere. How Istanbul looks like in 2023. First up, we're actually having lunch on this side. So in this side, there are lots of different kebab stores here. Kebab and shawarma is the most famous food in, in Turkey. If you come to Turkey, if you didn't try shawarma, you didn't be in Turkey. Can I? Oh, he's not gonna feed me, but okay. <laughs> oh! You thought he's gonna feed you? I thought so. It's nice and How is it? crispy. I like it. I believe that's a beef and there's a chicken option here too. So it's still quite juicy inside. So Which one you want to take? Chicken or beef? Personally, I think I like chicken more. Can we get a chicken kebab? Yeah, yeah. yeah one kebab. What is the difference between kebab and shawarma? This we'll leave it to the expert. We'll put it here. <laughs> I know, from what I know, it's that first time when I come to Turkey, I realized that this is actually called a donut. A donut, it's like a stick in the middle of a pile of meat rotating like this. It's called a donut. Okay, 70. Okay. Mm, I feel a lot of tomato inside and pickle. Justin favorite. Mmm. Mmm. It's so tasty. I love how they put pickle inside. Yeah, I'm glad I took the big bite. So you get a piece of everything. Then digest this. <laughs> so yeah, the pickle is so strong and powering. Compared to an ordinary kebab, this adds extra acidity into it. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> you don't like it? It's okay. Really? I love it. For me, this is the best shawarma ever. Kebab, shawarma. I don't know what is this, but we call this shawarma in Russia because in Russia, shawarma is usually a little bit. The skin is fat. This is just like so thin. Mwah. Perfect. It's okay. <laughs> So standing behind me right here, this has got the Taksim Mosque. Apparently it's actually newly built in 2020 or 2021. And you can hear, now they are actually doing some sort of call to prayer. There are two like towers there. Those are called minarets actually. And that's where they spread this call to prayer to the town nearby. So it's so loud usually. So here in Istanbul, there are actually more than 3,000 mosques around the city. That's because in Turkey, 99% of the population is actually Muslim. That's why you can see lots of people wearing like a hijab on their head. You can see also there is lots of mosques being built around the city. Where else visit to our Airbnb, which is also in this area. The reason why we choose this area is because good attractions, good transportation, also lots of food options here. And opposite our Airbnb, there is actually a grocery stores where they sell a variety of your daily necessities and products. And what's highlight about this store is that they actually sell lots of fruits that we can make to juice as well. That's really good because in Istanbul, you can buy fresh juice. For example, pomegranate juice. It's like this cup and they use around eight pomegranate for one juice. It's really fresh. Last time I take it and it's so sour. In other countries, usually they put some ice, they put some water and they put a little bit juice original, but here it's so different. Mm. Full bottle of fresh juice. On this particular street, there are lots of local delicacies I really want to try. So we're going to start off with this store right here, which is called Sarey Mohalibisisi. But anyway, we're going to try the rice pudding here because they are very famous for it. And also this one here oh. looks very interesting. So I want to try this too. Wow, that's so good. Mm -hmm. uh. One. So, so talk? Sutlach. 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 And then I want to get the, the one at the window. The Car pistachio. Yeah, yeah. The okay. one. How, one. Much, how much is that one? 15. 15? Yeah. Okay, 15. And. Do you have like tea? Turkish chai? tea? Chai? Yeah. yeah. Two. Two. Two, please. They call it chai. Yeah. Like India, like Russia. Yeah. Oh, look at this. I can open that. It reminds me to condensed milk, but a little bit less sugar. And this is like a bread, chocolate bread with condensed milk. I don't know. It is good. I like it. Right here, we've got the pistachio pie, which is called bumakadai. 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 Yeah, so let's give it a try. It's got pistachio, looks like some honey glaze on top as well. 
Just did all this so long. <laughs> it's my first time actually eating pistachio. I'm okay with this one. It's sweet and it's like a hot dessert. My rating? 7. 10. So delicious. 100. Because, <laughs> because it's chai. So beautiful. Ah, yeah, the design is ah. very beautiful actually. It's a traditional Turkish design. Oof, what a delicious dessert just then. I think for me, coming to Turkish dessert places is like going to a museum where they display a whole range of really beautiful displayed all around. You can see it here, which is pouring the syrup on top of the dessert here, and it looks beautiful. This street right here is Dikla Kadesi. It's a mix of modern and old, especially when you see the architecture here. It's very European style. It kind of reminds me that we're actually in Europe. As you can see, the architecture is here. It's a mix of modern and old. There is the Western architectures, very old ancient style. At the same time, underneath, all the trendy modern stores. This street in particular is one of the, I guess, entertainment and also like a shopping area where people after work, they will come here and hang out. Even the locals are actually here, for example, you know. Today is a Monday when in the afternoon, you see a bunch of people in cafes and restaurants here in Istanbul. It's honestly a shame because we actually just had, you know, sort of like a decent lunch. Otherwise, I want to show you a lot more and try a lot more street food. But this is one of the famous food that you could try here. This dish is actually called kumpi. I hope I'm pronouncing it right again, but basically it's like a stuffed potato you can see on the drawings there they open up a potato and inside you put all these stuffings and I guess it's a very filling lunch I would say like filling dessert snack lunch whatever but yeah it's uh, very filling and I think it's quite delicious if you're a fan of potato and you stuff everything in it's like a subway but instead of bread they put the potato inside but I can imagine if European people come to Turkey they'll probably be like oh I say this every day but yeah for me these kind of infrastructures Western style beautiful. I think another reason why this street is so famous is because the variety of shops. Example, there is actually lots of different candy shops around selling all these really appetizing <laughs> delicious desserts. Just like different weed shapes, see? This one looks like a wire, metal wire, and this one just like a macaron, macaron but it looks like a spongy Look thing. This. Yeah, it's like a silver um, nuts kind of thing. Like, lots of gummies inside as well in the barrel, so very interesting. We're definitely gonna try it one time. And next door, here, you can see lots of different Turkish delights. And also there is something called balakva. It's just something that we really want to try in the coming days. Baklava. Baklava. <laughs> I sound like an absolute noob pronouncing all these Turkish words. These are Turkish delights and inside there are some nuts and I think the outside is gonna be gummy but it all comes down to taste tomorrow. Today we have a lot of sweets just now already so I think we wanna save some space for later. Hello Australia! <laughs> Welcome to Turkey, Istanbul! Thank you, thank you very much. Tuk, tuk, tuk. <laughs> So another thing worth mentioning is that here in Istanbul, there are a lot of cats roaming around the streets and it's completely normal, apparently. You can see cats at every single corner here in Istanbul, but apparently these stray cats are actually very well fed, so there are people regularly feeding them. Another cat. <laughs> Standing behind me right here is the Galata Tower and apparently it was built in the 14th century. It was used for multiple purposes. It was for lighthouse, like military base and then after that it was used for prison as well. So lots of different purposes but now it serves as an exhibition for most tourists. Usually you can see people going up to see the beautiful view of Istanbul and to go to upstairs you need to pay around 600 lira but we had a better way to <laughs> see from top of view. Yeah, let's without to... sharing our space with the crowd. Yeah, let's go to flight drone. So yeah, 
Yeah, if you've got a drone, then you can basically see the same view. But what attracts me the most here under Galata Tower are these cafes. Especially this one right here is called Viana Cavesi, which they serve a very Instagrammable chocolate cheesecake that we actually had yesterday. Apparently for me, I felt like a chocolate cheesecake yesterday was quite rich in the Belgium chocolate, so it was quite delicious. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is cheesecake is something special. It's so different compared to other cheesecakes. It's priced around 250 lira. And also we bought some tea that's priced around 75. I won't say it's a cheap uh, dessert, but it's really tasty and it's worth it to come here. I actually just discovered there is actually a Sobe restaurant here. I'm not too sure if you know who Sobe is. Alina doesn't know who Sobe is, but Sobe is basically a person, an entertainer who is quite famous on YouTube. He has his own restaurants. He's a chef. He's also a butcher. So he likes to cut his steak like this and then put the salt on top, so that's why it's so bad. Apparently this is his ah. own burger shop. I know only like this. Yeah, that's from him. Oh. That's originally from him. <laughs> yeah. I always do that if I wanted something like special. <laughs> So we're getting into sunset time now. We decided to take a ferry to the Asia Star. And you heard it right, because Istanbul is a city, it's a transcontinental city that connects both Europe and Asia. And we're here at the ferry port. I believe this might be our boat to the um, Katakoi, oh no, which is on the Asia side. Faster. Yeah, so we decided it would be a good idea because we saw on the coastline of the Asian side, the sunset is actually quite pretty. So we just want to check it out. Go, 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 go. What are you doing? No, it's here. They say no, cannot. Huh? They say, they no, say... You, you tap again. No, no, you, you tap already. Let me try this one. <laughs> Shit, not enough money. So I need to uh, pay somewhere else. actually a Boslora straight boat tour that you can book but I know it's a little bit more expensive but it's guided and then they will tell you attractions along the way so I guess if you prefer that kind of traveling where there's a guide telling you what to do go to the Klook you use our code Project Web Fiber to get this can and save money for your boat tour but personally for us I think we saw online that more or less the view is very similar and we like to have our own timeline and our freedom to look at everything so uh, yeah, we chose to come on this local ferry, which I think was a very wise option. But anyway, we are in this area called Katakoi, which is a very popular district. And apparently Katakoi, compared to the European side, is a lot cheaper and it has a wide range of different international cuisines and also local food. And also there are lots of antique shops around. So that's what I saw according to research. Let's see how different it is from in real life. Mmm, desserts. Oh, it's like a stuffed croissant. Oh. One thing that I noticed in Turkey, dogs, they are really like big size like this. Hello. <laughs> it kind of reminds me a little bit of Istiklal Kedesi, just, just comparatively it's more narrower here. You can see the streets, it's uh, not as wide as the pedestrian street in Istiklal Kedesi, but here there are many bars. I feel like there's one of the places that you would come at night and just have a good time with your friends. You can see yeah, people just grabbing dinner here, hanging out with the friends. It looks very nice, I guess. We're drinking style. I feel like we're stopping every second just because there's so much interesting things going on on this side of the Istanbul. Oh my goodness, that is paradise. Just to give you a good observation here, everything, the prices here on the Asian side is a lot cheaper. For example, this portion is Kenda. The first time I had it was around 200 lira on the European side. And as you see, 85 lira, 75 lira, 79, over there there's a 59 lira. Everything seems like on the Asian side, it's a lot more affordable actually because, yeah, 
Why didn't we live here? Why didn't we stay here? On average, on the European side, on our street, it's the Cloud Cadesi because I guess that's the main street. A dish like Iskender is gonna cost 200, which is... Normal meal in that street is around 250, like minimum. Wow. Minimum. If we actually came from European side and took a ferry here, on the Asian side, it and would still be like, cheaper. Yeah. Now I know, we should live here. Yeah. We've arrived at our first destination on the Asian side today, which is Chinese stuffed mussel. And it's just like a small joint, and you see it's pretty old history since 1968, and you've got all these stuffed mussel inside. One piece is for six. Six lira. Six lira. Six okay. lira. Oh, okay. Let's get ten to try first. Oh, okay. Cool. Right, just like that. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's very tasty. It's really filling. Yeah, mm. I like it. It's very tasty. It's like some sort of sticky rice inside with the mussel. And you just push it on and uh, with the lemon juice on top. It's very delicious actually. They put inside rice? Yeah. Oh, really? I thought it's stuffed. It's stuffed mussel. So that's why these are already opened. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, very tasty, mm. you know. Six lira. You can eat everything. <laughs> Yum, yum, yum. I think we can order 20 actually. We can go with the number 10. I wouldn't bring you here if it's mm -hmm. some, not something special, no? Mm, amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was unexpected taste, so we just now we eat three plates. <laughs> That's not what I expected. It's very lazy. So delicious, my goodness. I just couldn't stop eating because it's so feeling. Me it's too. so cheap. Six lira for one. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, I'm not gonna stop talking about this for the rest of this trip, I think. <laughs> Justin, every time. Can we get more? Really? After more 10, can we get more? Yeah, it's so tasty. It's so addictive too. I feel like my stomach is half full now. Definitely ready for dessert. We are ready for dessert, so time to eat dessert. I wanted this one, the original normal chocolate. Wow, so tasty, so good. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Yo, you make my more pretty. Oh my, so tasty. See, the chocolate is just leaking out. Oh my goodness, everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't give it to you, I think. It's like when you go to America in Australia when you eat a burger, but you don't know how to eat a burger, so everything falls apart. This is like it in Istanbul. Oh, it's like chocolate too. Mmm, that's so good. Wow. I love that one. Mm. It's the most delicious dessert in Turkey so far. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It looks so happy. Of course I'm happy. Oh my god, this is like the best dessert I've had in a few years. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I wanna cry, it's so tasty. <laughs> We got some new subscribers here. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for stopping. Have a good Thank night. <laughs> Alright, bye bye. Every few seconds, I feel like Aww, someone's gonna come up and say that's hello. So cute. And they come up to us and say, oh, you guys are so cute couple. Aww, yeah, that's so nice. I love the Asian suburb. People are so nice and like everything is so vibrant. So much going on every day. I agree. This is area really reminds me to Korea or I don't know, like China, because streets is bigger, more spacious, like for car for people for walking and also this is kind of stores with accessory how do you make traditional turkish, turkish coffee. coffee this is sand they put inside the, like the boiler a, yeah coffee and it's boiled with just sand like yep. hot sand virtually we cannot try just not right now because it's a uh, nighttime ah, again everywhere <laughs> oh my god i want to eat everything <laughs> oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Oh, you're so cute, huh? Yo, 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 yo. Okay, okay, okay. Go to sleep. Good night. <laughs> oh, this is the Korean style photo selfie. Boots. Boots. That's so cute. Yeah, very nice photos. <laughs> I love this is something special. 
I love how it works. First, we're taking around maybe 10 or 12 random photo, and after that, we can choose every photo and like decide which photo we want to put here. That's so cool because sometimes you know we have like this exactly same things, but you can choose only four photo, and sometimes you like like this. This is perfect. I love it. After the selfie booth place, so we just keep walking the street and we came across this park right here. I think it's called Kukuk Park or Chokuk Park, I don't know. There's a sea and under there there's a... Anyway, it's like a very local parking scheme. People are just chilling here, sitting down somewhere, picnic, and it looks very relaxing. I feel like so far, the Asia site gives me the vibe that it's more local and authentic. You can see the daily lives of locals here on these streets. People are just sitting here, hanging out with their friends, drinking, just looking at the sea. It's so peaceful here. I can see people like holding plastic bags of beer and just like <laughs> come on away here to just hang out with friends. I love it. I really like the vibes here on the Asian side, I think. Oh, I just got a notification because yeah, flying in Japan now is cheaper. Oh, really? Yeah. So personally, we always book our flights, accommodation, car rentals from this app called the Kayak app, which is also the sponsor of this video. So it's very similar to other flight booking websites. Then you key in the location, departure, arrival, and then date. And then Kayak will do its thing and help you search the best and cheapest deal according to your preference. So what differentiates Kayak from the other booking sites is the price alert tool that I personally use a lot. So I think usually I like to set the location and the date and just let Kayak do its thing to track the price movement. If there are any changes, then Kayak will send me a notification letting me know so I can save money on flights. Sometimes when we go to a new country and we're not too sure when's the best time to go, we can actually use the Kayak app because there's this tool called Best Time to Travel Tool. So basically you key in the location that you want to fly to and the Kayak will kind of recommend the best time to travel to. So in this case, let's have a look at Japan. So they actually recommend flying to Tokyo in November just because it is cheaper and it's less crowded. Then they also have an additional recommendation to fly in March just because you know the cherry blossom But they did say it's gonna be a little bit more expensive just because there will be a lot of tourists around I wanna go in March <laughs> Let's go then My birthday <laughs> Yes, your birthday But if you like me, sometimes you don't know where you want to go There is also a kayak recommendation A browsing map where you can zoom in to see the price and location that you're going Or there's a list of recommendations that you can just scroll through and gives you an idea of where you want to go So if you're looking for great deals on flights, then I highly recommend checking out the kayak app Link in the description Alright, time for breakfast Let's, Let's go, go. <laughs> Good morning <laughs> Dobre utra Good morning how to say good morning in uh, Turkish? Wait, let me do a quick search. Dobre utra. Good night. Huh? Good night. Good night. Oh my god, it really sounds like good night. <laughs> good night. Good, good night. morning. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to day two. And today for breakfast, we actually decided to go to try something called Turkish breakfast, also called kavati here in Turkish. I think breakfast is actually a huge culture here in Turkey. It's probably the most important meal here. That's why the meal is also the biggest. So we're now slowly making it to our breakfast place. And the thing about Istanbul is that it's a very hilly region. So there are slopes like this that just goes 45 degrees down. Down. It, it does take a toll on your knees just because it is really steep. It feels like it's 45 degrees maybe. Uh, this area got Sikhangij and there are lots of cafes around. We decided to go to this place because it's got good reviews online. Kavati can actually Basically, it just means breakfast, so you can actually eat it everywhere. But this in particular has a big platter, which is like traditional kabati. I really want to experience. And also, they have unlimited tea. That's what Alina came for. Malt, <laughs> kaimak, <laughs> <laughs> honey and cream. Honey and cream. So honey and molasses, lemon, cream, cream. Cheese, butter. Okay, Alina's favorite Veggie. place. Vegetable, <laughs> tomato and cocoa paste. Cherry jam, strawberry jam. Cool. Eggs. White flour, this brown flour. Yeah, let's dig in. Looks delicious. I think that's the whole idea of Turkish breakfast. It's a mixture of everything. Different tastes that activate your palate. For example, the sourness into it and the sweetness. Yeah, just a mix of everything. Yeah, and it's really delicious. And I feel like it's kind of worth the price too. With this amount of portion. Yeah, really sour, not sour, salty, sweet, like all mixed for mixed lava. Anyway, 
today is a huge day because we're going to the Sultan Ahmed site. I'm gonna see a lot of different attractions. And now we're gonna take the tram to there because it's the closest transportation option. We need so we're taking car. metro, we're taking buses. This time we're gonna take the tram. And for you to get around Istanbul, it's very important to have Istanbul cards. So as you can see, the same transportation card can be shared between two people or even more people. So you can pay for many tickets. Just pass on the card. Tram is here. Oh. So this tram right here is the T1 tram and it takes you from one side of the European side to the other side, which is where Sultanama is located. The thing I noticed here in Turkey, especially in Istanbul, if you take transportation, it's counted on a per trip basis rather than the distance you travel. For example, here, this tram that we're taking, we pay 15 lira, so regardless of the distance you travel, anyway, you're paying 15. Basically, you'll see everyone pretty much just gets up at the Sultan Ahmed Sultan Ahmed Sultan Ahmed station because it is a main touristy area and as soon as you walk out the whole vibe just completely changes because basically everyone you see here tourist 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 <laughs> it's so congested here not just the road even the pedestrian streets are full of people everywhere I'm gonna show you all around everywhere is tourist and just send the tram actually past as well of the main attractions and it was super packed there was like a huge line waiting to go into a concert or something but it's actually going to one of the attractions crazy and you can see like lots of tourist signs because everyone comes to this part there is actually a reason why we particularly choose to come to Basilica system first instead of going to the mosque because now it's actually called the prayer time we actually intentionally check it online in advance last night so there are five quarter prayers every day and one o'clock zero one p.m. is exactly the time it starts so now it is starting they have special website where you can check what time they're gonna pray right. and at this time you cannot go to mosque yep. That's why I intentionally come to this place rather than a mosque because during the mosque call to prayer time inside the mosque, so like a blue mosque, they're all closed so you can't go in. For me, I feel like this is something that is very interesting to me. It's my first time hearing these kind of quality probably just so close to you from a mosque. I guess because where I grew up, I never actually experienced this. I've got lots of Muslim friends back in Melbourne, Australia, but yeah, they don't do this usually. In my city, because I grew up in Tatarstan in Russia, so it like this mosque is everywhere. So sometimes, yeah, I hear that. So mm. for me, it's like normal. It's actually so beautiful how they sing. Yeah, you can, you can hear there how they are singing from their heart. Arabic language, uh, I guess. Basilica system was actually a water reservoir that was built around 6th century, which means around 1,400 years ago. It is insane. This place was initially built to supply water to the palace and also the neighboring towns as well. It can pump up to 100,000 tons of water, which is really impressive. You think this is like almost 1,400 years ago. It is. And the fact that it is still standing, I think there are around 300 columns at this place in 12 different rows. And the fact that it's still standing today, it just marks its impressive architecture, I guess. To be honest, here is that dark that I don't think we can show how it looks like but it's in real life it's much better. You can actually feel the humidity in here just because there is water and it's underground as well. It get a little bit wet, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've made it inside the Blue Mosque and this building here is actually the prime example of Ottoman Empire architecture. So you can see all these beautiful minarets and the special thing about the Blue Mosque is that there are actually six minarets. And the fun facts about this mosque, long time ago that when they just built this place, Sultan, he said to designer, oh, I want an Altun. Altun, it means gold in Turkish language. He thought it's like Altun because Altun is in Turkish language, it's six. So he did mistake and he built the six minarets this mosque. I can imagine how shocked was that Sultan when he, when he came like, where is my gold minaret? Why here is six? <laughs> Alte and Altun. So the reason why it's called a blue mosque is because inside there are actually 20,000 hand-printed blue and 
white ceramic tiles. And actually, just then when I walked in, there was also red color, which I didn't mention in any of the websites. Anyway, the reason why we came out here is because inside it is just way too loud. So many constructions going on, so many tours, even though it says be quiet inside, but no, the reality is that it is very loud. So the Blue Mosque itself is actually a prime example of the architecture back then of the Ottoman Empire, just because you can see the dome shapes architecture and also there are many minarets around. So standing in front of me here, this is the Grand Bazaar. It is actually one of the oldest and largest covered markets in the world. Super excited about this because this is one of the most famous attractions, whole of Turkey, and also around the world. It's on my bucket list. Let's go. As you can see, it's completely busy in here and it's quite chaotic, I must say, a lot of people. This is what you need to expect. Oh my goodness, look at that size. It's so chaotic, oh my god, it's a lot of people. Whoa, and the amount of stores in here as well. Inside the Grand Bazaar, there are actually over 4,000 stores in this 30,000 square meters. This whole area is one of the largest in the world and you can see there's so many people today. This place actually started in 1453, so it's over 570 years operating. So this was after the Ottoman Empire invaded and occupied Istanbul, Constantinople at that time and turned this into a main hub for selling things. So you can see lots of sellers all around selling jewelry, accessories, clothing, all kinds of spices as well. Wow, green. Mm. It's actually so tasty. Inside sweet and some nuts. Very mm. good. Mm. <laughs> That's deadly. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> oh, crazy. Oh my god, that was very tasty. Sresti. Sresti. Can you like Oh, it's the crush well. Me too, please, I got you. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that one. <laughs> but here in Grand Bazaar, there are a lot of these stores where they sell these kind of Turkish delight, which is a famous local delicacies here. You can see there are lots of different versions, different colors. The thing I like about Turkish dessert places, it's always so colorful. It makes you want to eat everything, literally. And they always feed you something. If you want to try, you can yep. try for free and like taste how it's traditional Turkish delight. Hello, what is this? Turkish delight. Almond. We don't sugar. No calorie. Mm. Wow. Very good. Australia. For you? Russia. Russia. Очень <laughs> красиво. That's why I like Turkey because they they never like put you something to buy, buy, buy. No, if you want, okay, no need, no need. Yeah, they're very chill. Let's just put yeah. it that way. This is my favorite session. It's a tea session. They have many herbal tea, dry, and this is like just mean. When you put inside cup, it's like open. But the bed, we don't know price because they never show. Probably need like negotiation. Everyone speaks Russian in this market, I'd say. It's very delicious. It's very delicious. Let's try it. Like this? Like this? Like this? Oh, very delicious. Let's try it. I show her the better one. She goes for that. Philosophy of women. <laughs> you like it? It's good, but this one is much better. What is different? Try it and you will understand. <laughs> you try it. No, I think it's similar to the one I tried just then. Oh, really? Uh, similar. Yeah. It means I will give you something different. Come here. It's okay, no need, no need many wear, so... Rory! <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're scared. <laughs> we are so full already. Oh. This one is so good. Open your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take my finger. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> This is delicious mm. because I know the better one. Shai khush papru. Ocean of Kusna. Ocean of Kusna. Great. Where are you from? I'm from Australia. Australia. I yeah. love kangaroos. <laughs> but why you eat kangaroos? It's so animal. It's so good. I don't eat kangaroos myself. Okay. I love you then. You <laughs> this one is a tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is like red. You oh, wow. YouTuber or what? Yes, yeah, we are YouTubers. This is YouTube. Вот это easy week, вот это очень вкусно. Давайте попробуем. But you origin of which country? Originally from Hong Kong. How? That's Mandarin, that's Mandarin. Yeah, you can say Lei Ho. Lei Ho. Yes, exactly. Yes, perfect pronunciation. Lei Ho. Lei thank you. Thank you, Lei Thank you, Lei That's so cool. It's so good and so delicious. Wow. This one, the blackberry, apple tea, mango, rose, mixed fruit, and Viagra. Jiggy jiggy bomb. Yeah, <laughs> and those are the infusions, okay? 
Do you like that? I love it. <laughs> it's so tasty. Little bit, little bit okay, let's take 100 grams. Mm. Sorry, pomegranate. it's pomegranate. 150 is enough. Oh, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> Russia. I love Hong Kong, Australia. It's good. Yes. Thank thank you, thank you. You. Enjoy your day, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Number Bye. 16, the shop. All right. Yes, we will remember. Yes. <laughs> this guy's a joker. I love him. <laughs> yeah, this is a good, good seller. This how good seller is working. Yeah, like the good hospitality, like funny. They can like sell for you everything. <laughs> yep. To be honest, we come here. We didn't plan to buy nothing, but it's ah, I, I don't know how people cannot like don't buy if if it's like okay, let's try this. He's still kind of a seller. I'm a bit ashamed because I didn't put my negotiating skills from India to good use. I feel like after 10 minutes in this bazaar, we are ready full. We are ready to drink a lot of tea. We are ready to buy something. Otherwise, if you keep staying here, they will they will sell for you everything. We are back to Istiklal Kadesi, which is at Taksim. It's just around the corner of our Airbnb. Just because we've had a long day today and wanna just like spend some time around our neighborhood today. Maybe have a chill night. This place actually turns into a very vibrant night pedestrian. You can see there's so many people walking past us. It's very lively, the restaurants are all open. And I think at night, Istiklal Kadesi is actually even prettier than daytime. It gives this <laughs> Christmas atmosphere in the street, always. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Maybe because of these like, you know, Overhanging light decoration. If you don't want to pay for the tickets, you can actually stand outside of the tram. These are called free riders. So basically, if you just hang on to the gate outside, for example, these kids right here or this guy in front, then you don't have to pay for the tram ticket. But otherwise, you need to go in and pay. Oh, this kid is uh, probably going to hop onto the side as well. <laughs> there we go. Paradise. In Turkey, in Istanbul, especially this district, so expensive. I don't know why, but I thought Turkey is a cheap country to travel to like a few years ago. Before it was, but not now. Now it's more like a Europe. Now everything is like European price, or even more expensive than Australia because Australian dollars now depreciate. <laughs> we in the central of European side, so he's like a pricey, yep. tourist pricey. Now let's try traditional famous Turkish ice cream. Why it's so famous? Because they screaming and they don't give you ice cream. You, you should try to catch it. And now I'm gonna try to catch it. <laughs> yeah, if we're gonna give you a new one. Ayo. But the thing is, once you hold on to the cone, there's no going back. He's just gonna go on with it. Just then, usually there is a cameraman and there is another person actually being played, right? And then after you've been played, then he'll reach out to me, the cameraman. It's like, oh, your turn, your turn. Yeah. You hold the camera. It's always and like you, this. And usually people are like, ah, what the what you yeah, do? Yeah. Okay, okay, you'll give me this ice cream. <laughs> once you hold it, it's over. <laughs> then uh, he's hooked you onto it. Yeah. How is the flavor, though? I love the strawberry. Sour, a little bit sour. It's a little bit like a... Oh, melting. Less talking, eating. <laughs> yeah, so strong strawberry taste. And the thing about Turkish ice cream that is so different to normal ice cream is the chewiness of the ice cream. That's why you can see here was so easily to play and manipulate the ice cream just then. The ice cream texture itself is very sticky and chewy as well. With that Turkish ice cream, I think this concludes <laughs> our day. 48 hours here in Turkey, Istanbul. The next episode, we'll actually be flying to Antalya. So if you want to see more about Turkish, so make sure to subscribe now. And also we'll be going to quite a few interesting countries coming out like Kazakhstan, maybe like Mongolia as Georgia. well. I think Georgia. That's mm -hmm. all on our roadmap. Subscribe now if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs>